All right, so this is our last project and uh, it's a night project for a change. Uh, I shot this right after sunset. I was trying to get lone exposure, you know, it's a classic, lone exposure uh, with the cars. Uh, and so we have, I had, um, I was at uh, 30 seconds. I, I pushed the whole uh, aperture to F18. So then that forcing the 30 second exposure. And uh, so that's pretty nice. The only problem is that when you go over like F10 or F11, uh, there are some good things because you get lone exposure, so lone streak of lights. You get uh, star looking uh, city lights, which is cool, but you also get uh, sensor dust uh, much more visible. So we're gonna have to take care of that. And, uh, you know, I mean, I like this scene, but it's really lacking of drama for me. So I just wanna show you that when you use the proper sky for the proper photo, you get an, a decent result. So let's start, some, let's start with some basic retouching, open up the shadows and bring it on the highlights and then doing the whites and the blacks. Okay, that you know by now. Um, I, wanna, I wanna put a warm sky, so I think I'm gonna go for sh uh, shade on, on my um, white balance. As you can see, shade is, uh, is gonna make the whole thing uh, a lot uh, warmer. And there is another uh, aspect to it because I'm going to use the product mode, uh, the multiply mode actually on on, um, on Photoshop to to merge the sky. And the way that that, that fusion uh, blending mode works is that uh, anything which is white becomes transparent. So when you have a very blue sky, which is kind of boring on some photo, uh, putting it to shade is warming up the photo. And warming up the photo is getting rid of the blue and making it more white. And thereafter making it easier to merge later on. Okay, so that's that. Let's add some clarity to make this pop real hard and uh, maybe a little bit brighter. Okay. Okay, so let's look if there is some noise uh, to be uh, uh, taken care of. Uh, it's a bit grainy, not so much. Uh, yeah, uh, when you look for noise, always look in the dark areas. This is where the noise lies. Uh, so, Let's go to the noise, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put around. Yeah, there's a bit of noise here. Uh, I'm gonna put around like uh, 30 on this one. And so you know the formula. If I put 30 of noise, I put, I take 100 and deduct that, so I put 70 of sharpening. That's just how I rock on this. Okay, and um, let's go to the uh, lens correction. I'm gonna unable profile correction. Remove chromatic aberration and uh, let's do a little uh, auto upright. Yeah, so that we have like an original line, which is perfect. That's pretty, pretty cool. Now, uh, I need to take care of the dust because, uh, I mean, you know, we are going to blend a sky, which is cool, but, you know, we cannot have as much dust. So we can do it in Photoshop or we can do it in Lightroom. I'll show you the way of doing it in Lightroom. You just paint over the little dust using the spot removal tool. And that does a decent job. You have to do it at 100% because dust uh, is, you know, is hidden, is hidden, is hidden. Also, you have a new option, which, which is a lovely in Lightroom 5. If you're not sure where the dust is, let me show this to you. You have to press um, T for the tool bar. See, T is bringing the toolbar up or down and click on visualize spot. This way you can really see the spot. Cool. And uh, just for example, if I take it out, you know, uh, if I don't look at visual spot, like there are some spots which I, I don't see, and I can only see them with the visualized spot. So you know, it takes a bit of time, but that's important uh, to take care of that when you uh, blend skies. You can even the price of one to have two spots. You know? And uh, yeah, I mean. As we're going to be blending sky, it's not a big deal if some is, uh, is left over, but you get the idea. I'm going to do most of this. And you know what? I'm not going to do everything. I just want to show you actually a faster way to take care of that in Photoshop. Uh, right now, this is I'm going to leave some on purpose uh, with Lightroom, which we're going to finish up in, uh, in Photoshop. Okay, that's about it. Now, if I move, to, if I move my tool out, you see, up, oh, I can tell the spots, but I, I leave some on purpose. So let me uh, go out of that tool. All right, so we still have some spot left, and I'm gonna right-click, edit, edit in Adobe Photoshop CC. 
Okay, so we are in Photoshop and uh, let's take care of the dust. I just want to show you. Well, the reason it's, it's faster, it's this tool, the spotting brush tool, is because, uh, oops, let me make it smaller with the control and uh, alt key, that's going to make it smaller, is that in Lightroom, uh, you are creating a non-destructive workflow, meaning that uh, you are, you know, you are adding things with mathematical formula on the top of your photo and so it takes a bit more time to process you cannot just paint like this even with a fast computer and just you know brush it off well you can do that in photoshop so when you do a sky replacement it's important to have you know a pretty clean uh, sky to start with you know i mean if you forget a few things it's fine but that's the problem with uh, you know closing the aperture any dust is going to come and there's always dust in these sensors. I don't know what. I don't know why, but there's always dust. I clean it a lot, but I still get a lot of dust. Okay, so now we got a pretty decent sky. Let's go back to Lightroom and let's look at our sunset library. Uh, and that's the one I actually want to put. This is a, a sunset. Now it's a it's a small res solution. Um, sorry, sunset at 2,240 pixels wide, and. Um, if you, the only thing I did in Lightroom on this sunset was get the noise reduction around 24 because it was a bit grainy. So now I'm going to click edit, edit in, in Adobe Photoshop CC to open it up. I'm going to edit with a Lightroom adjustment. I'm going to take the move tool and just move it over and press shift so it's in the middle. But you see that it's a lot smaller than the uh, original photo. But that's fine because uh, that's the good thing about sky. Skies are very... Uh, smooth textures and smooth textures can be expanded uh, pretty much without losing so much quality so command T to get the handles and uh, let's put the sky oh let me put this into multiply and I'm gonna put it something like that yeah something like that a bit higher up yeah the whole idea is to get the Sun there um, okay Let's maybe get this a bit more done. Yeah, something like that. Okay, that's that's pretty decent. Now to blend it better, uh, we need um, we're gonna do that with a brush and not with um, with a gradient. So for this, I'm gonna create a white layer, an empty mask. Sorry, make sure that my foreground is black because when I paint on black, I'm gonna hide what's there. Take a brush. Take a little brush and uh, yeah, opacity around 20%. That's kind of cool. The first thing I usually do is make a big brush and just using the edge of the brush, you know, I just brush wherever the end of uh, my um, photo is. Let me put this away for a sec so you can see it in big. And I just brush, brush, brush. I mean, 17 might be a bit not strong enough. I'm going to put 36. And. Um, 36, making sure that my foreground color is, yeah, now that's better. Okay, let me now lower that. And that's the good thing about brushes. You have to, you know, always lower, make it higher. I'm gonna make it around like 25 or something. And now I'm gonna brush a bit on the building. So I don't want the sunset. I mean, sunset should reflect on buildings, but not that much, you know. With the product mode, they reflect too much. So I'm just gonna take some up, zoom in a little bit. And uh, so I'm just brushing, you know, brushing, brushing a little bit on the buildings to take out some of the reflection that's there. Oh, on this one, there's a lot of reflection. So let's zoom in and let's brush it away. There should be some reflection. That's kind of cool, but not that much. Okay. Yeah, on the side of the building here. Make sure you don't do something like that, it's going to spray the hello. If you do, just press X or Menzi <laughs> to undo it. Make sure because you don't go over the building, that's important. We're just trying to, you know, uh, make the reflections on the building a bit more subtle. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty decent. Uh, one thing we can do to blend it even more, we can lower the opacity of that layer. But usually don't lower and I just take a few percentage of like 5%. It just helps planning it a bit more now. And uh, so that's my first process. So I'm going to file. Uh, 
close. Save. Now, oh, I have a little bug on Lightroom. It's not really important, but that's just my computer. Okay, I'm going to put on pause and we're going to be back in Lightroom with the photo report. Lightroom. Uh, let's go to the develop module and uh, finish off this photo, which looks a lot more dramatic. Um, I usually do what I, we call a double process. I'm going to put the shadows a little bit, bring down a bit the highlights. I'm going to add a bit more clarity. I want to make this a bit, you know, woo. And um, I'm going to add a graded filter. Press the Alt key to reset everything, put the exposure down, and I'm going to create a vignette effect for the bottom just to uh, sort of uh, make that photo, you know, I think it just makes it more interesting because, you, you know, the top of the sky is already dark and the bottom now is dark, so it, it just makes the photo a bit more interesting. Okay, so we're pretty much done. So that was the before photo. Uh, actually, that's the original before photo, totally without a re uh, with retouching. Let me put on a reset. Okay. Oh, what's happening? No, that's the one. I'm going to reset it. So that's the before, and that's the after. Talk about adding drama. So well, I hope you, uh, you, you like this sky replacement course. As you can tell, the whole idea is really to, um, to look for the right type of sky. Uh, if you see, uh, you will see you have three folders, bad weather, uh, daylight, and sunsets. And so it takes some time to find the right sky. But you know, try to find a sky that matches the time of the day. That that's already a good start. Sometime you can take a sunset and put it over a daylight photo and it will work and look amazing. But sometime it's not. So that's the whole idea. And uh, But I think um, some of this before after are really working well. So let me show them to you again. That's the before of the Notre Dame. And that's the after. I, li I like the drama there. Uh, that's the behind the roof of Notre Dame, that's the before, that's the after with the sepia look and the god rays, that works fine too. This one I love, that's uh, Pont Neuf, before and after. That's, this one is really cool, the one we just did is, is, uh, is this one, that was the before, and that's the after. And then we had the Eiffel Towel, which was the pano, that's the final. And that's the Eiffel Towel, that's the before, blue sky, you know, afternoon sky, and that's the after. So, you know, it is, it is really uh, useful when you, you spend so much energy trying to find a great location and taking the photo and the sky is boring. Well, don't hesitate. Try to replace the sky and you might come up with a bestseller. Thank you very much for being there and I'll see you in another training.